In our previous video, we saw how to introduce Google Maps to our application by using a Google Maps activity. In this video, we're going to see how we can refactor and make that a bit more efficient by using a fragment with a shared view model and shared live data. Let's start by making a new fragment. So we'll right click, New, scroll down, choose Fragment, and then let's just choose Fragment in blank. And we'll call this Diary Map Fragment. And Fragment Diary Map, that'll be fine for a layout. We'll take a look at our layout that was created, Fragment Diary Map. It's given us a frame layout and everything's fine there. Notice it's referring back to our Diary Map Fragment class that it just created as well. Inside of this, it gives us a generic text view. We don't want that text view. What we want to see is a map. So for that, it's a very specific syntax and a map is actually a fragment itself. So we'll start with a fragment tag. And then Android layout width, we'll say match parent, which means take up the whole space. And again, match parent for the height as well. Let's give it a few more things to indicate that it's going to be a map. So Android name equals, careful on typing this because you want it to look exactly as I have it here, com.google. So support map fragment is a class that Android uses just to draw this map. And then we need to give it an ID. And finally, close out our fragment tag. And that does it for the layout. Let's go back and look at the fragment itself. So uh, a whole bunch of things going on here, more than we really need. I'm going to clean a lot of this up. So when it's all done, I have my fragment with on create view and I've cleaned up everything else. I'm going to make one other subtle change and this is a bit specific to my project, but I'm going to have it extend diary fragment, which is my super class fragment for all of my fragments. So diary fragment, just like so. And a couple things I'm going to do now in the on create view. First of all, let's save what it inflates to a variable. Let's say var root view equals, just like so. And then we'll return root view. So at the end, we're just the same, just a bit of refactoring here to let us add a few more lines. I'm doing that because I want to get access to this map fragment. So I'm going to say child fragment manager dot find fragment by ID and then r dot id dot what do we call it map uh, map fragment so if we remember back here we called it map fragment i'm simply pulling out this map fragment and making it available to my diary map fragment class which is going to handle all of the logic all of the interaction and all of the code now let's save this in a variable so it can be useful to us so i will say as support map fragment so essentially casting it val map fragment equals like so and import now in the next line i can say map fragment dot get map async now take a look at what it gives us here we can either take a map callback or we can do an open and close curly and the open and close curly gives us essentially one of these lambdas and what we're getting is a google map so it means this has been initialized if we are at this point so I'll simply say Google map, and then we we'll use our Lambda indicator. And I'm going to do a couple of things here. First of all, I'm going to save it into a variable that I can access in other locations. So we'll say private var m map Google map, just like so. And then we'll say Google map m map equals Google map. And we'll add the late init indicator up above. One other thing I'm going to do is create a Boolean. And that's simply going to tell us whether the map is ready or not. So we'll say map ready equals true here. And then we're going to call a new function update map. More to come on this update map. And we have more to come on this map fragment as well. But first I want to start wiring things up through our activity because we have a view model that is shared through this main activity. So to make it available to our map, I have to essentially let our activity know about our map as well. So I'm going to make a new function in our main activity. We'll say internal fun on open map. Then we'll simply say support fragment manager begin transaction just as we see up above. So we're simply taking whatever the active fragment is and replacing it with our new maps fragment. So replace 
Now I know I have to do a little bit of refactoring on my other fragment because I have this active fragment logic going on. Not going to worry about that just yet. We're, our main focus right now is on our map. Let's go to our main fragment and see how we can invoke this new function on open map uh, in main activity. So if we look at main fragment, we'll see that there's this set on click listener for button forward, and it is calling the on left swipe function of main activity. Go back to main activity, on left swipe, here it is in main activity. That looks very similar to the on open map function that we have. So we simply want to replicate this kind of logic. Let me go ahead and copy this. Now I'm going to go up above to our current button map. And what we're currently doing is we're passing to a brand new activity, which is what I did in our previous video. But the problem there is we're not able to share our same view model. So let me take out that logic, put in this new logic, but instead of on left swipe, we'll simply say on open map, just like so. So now that map button is opening our map via our activity. Okay, great. That allows us to do something now that we couldn't do before in our diary map fragment. We can listen to live data and populate our map with live data. So I'm going to overwrite a new function. We'll say on activity created and go ahead and leave the super call in there. And now I'm going to say activity dot let. Remember that let is one of our scoped functions. It means anything that happens inside of the open and close curly here is happening on our activity and IT is the iteration variable so we can use that to refer to our activity. Now in here we want to get access to that shared view model that we're using across all of our fragments. And I can borrow some logic from one of my existing fragments. We can see we've already done it here. You take a look at this activity let here and you see what it's doing is it's using the activity as a view model provider and then getting our main view model. So I'm simply going to copy this and paste it just like so, import. And now view model is not defined, so let me go ahead and define that up above as well. Just like so. Okay, now we have our main view model. And next thing that we can do is we can start to observe on our view model. So we can say view model dot specimens, where specimen is a specimens is immutable live data. So as the data changes, we can look at it, we can observe it, we can do things with it. So view model dot specimens dot observe, and we'll pass in this and then observer, and we'll make an observer in line with the open and close curly. And inside here, we're simply going to say specimens because notice we'll take a look at the parameter that's getting passed in. It's an array list of specimens. It's the specimens that we're observing on. So let me use our, our lambda syntax to say we're going to name it specimens. We're going to name the incoming variable specimens. And we're going to save this. So let's say this.specimens equals specimens. Now what's this.specimens? has not yet been defined, so let's define that up above again. Private late init var specimens list specimen, just like so. Okay, and so save it from our observable up to an attribute that we can read through this entire class. Oop, look like we need to do a bit of import there. There we go. And then what we're going to do is call update map. Now notice that we have we already have our update map function. The reason why I'm calling update map is that we don't know which one of these is going to happen first. Is the map going to be ready or are we going to hear back from the specimens that we're observing on? Well, they both have to happen before we can update the map. So now we can go in and we can actually update the map. So let's say if and what was my map ready variable we had before? Map ready. Okay if map ready and specimens is not equal to null, then that means we have what we need to update our map. So we'll say specimens, which is a collection, so we can say for each, open and close curly. And then inside of this, we can borrow a little bit, a little bit of logic we had from our uh, maps activity that we created earlier, a bit of marker logic, just like so. I'll copy it and I'll explain it once I've copied it. So what we're doing here is we are observing on a collection of specimens that we got already through live data. We're iterating, iterating over those specimens, and for each specimen, we want to grab its latitude, its longitude, 
and then put a marker for that specimen. Let's do a couple things to make this a little bit easier on us. This is yet another lambda function, and you see that this one is using it as the iteration variable, and the iteration variable is of, is of type specimen. When I say iteration variable, that means we're looping over something every time we iterate or every time we loop, we shake hands with something. What we're shaking hands with is a specimen. So let's make this more explicit. Let's go ahead and name this incoming parameter. We'll say specimen, and then we use the arrow indicator, and then everything else works out just great. So we loop, we shake hands with an individual specimen, and we get its latitude, we get its longitude, and we make a marker with that latitude and longitude. And then we add a title, which is the two string value of that specimen. Let's do one more thing, just a preemptive check. Let's say if specimen dot longitude is empty, and we'll negate that to make it is not empty. And specimen dot latitude is empty again. And once again, we'll negate that to say is not empty. So we want to make sure that we're not going to run into an issue when we're trying to parse those from strings to doubles. So with this, let's see how it goes. Our application is started. Let's see what happens now when I press on the Maps button. So we are in our diary map fragment, so you know we're now using the fragment. We're not using the activity that we initially had when we created this map. You see, the first thing that happens is we observe the specimen data that comes from live data. So we get our specimens. We save that to a local attribute, and you notice it has size of 20, and then we go to Update Map. Now we go to Update Map, but have we heard back from the map yet? Looks like the map is not ready, because you remember we did this little inline function here where we said when the map is ready, we're going to store a local copy of the map in this mmap variable, and then we're going to set map ready to true. So right now the map is not ready, so I'm anticipating that it's going to skip this block which is good, it skips the block. If it didn't, we would get an exception that there was no map to put markers on. I go ahead and I choose F9. Now when I choose F9, guess who we hear back from now? Well, now we're hearing back from the map itself and the map is saying, okay, yeah, I'm ready. So we flip this map ready flag to true and now we call update map again. And now let's see what happens this time around. We have map ready, which is true, and then specimens we know has already been populated. That was actually populated first. So we F8 over, and it's going to go through this for each loop, and it's going to add a marker for each of those 20 specimens. Now, as I mentioned, I put a lot of specimens in the same location, so we actually only see two markers here. But nonetheless, you notice that we are able to update our map, and we're able to use live data. The advantage here is, over the previous way we had done it, we can now get rid of this maps activity, and you see the maps activity is very big, and it also is using a bit of copy and paste that I did that violates the duplicated blocks rule of technical debt. But we got new capability as well. Watch what happens when I go in and I update a record on Firebase Cloud Firestore. Let's change this one to 32.14 and change. And guess what? Take a look. The breakpoint is hit because we are observing on the data. So when the data changes, we're going to know about it. So I go ahead and I choose F9, and it's going to go back and update my map. And let's see what we got. Now you notice that we have more bullet points than we had before. We had these two earlier, but now we have two more. One was just when I paused the video and I updated a location. Uh, the other was the one that we just updated, which is this one right here. So you see that as I'm updating the latitude and longitude in Firebase, the map updates automatically. I removed some breakpoints so we can watch this happen in high definition in real time. So let's take a look at this purple cone flower, and I will change the longitude here. Let me change it to minus 94. That should move it a little bit to the west. And sure enough, you see shortly after I did it, it put it on 94 longitude right around Missouri. Boy, that was a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and bump the latitude. Let's put the latitude up to 45 and that will likely bump it up somewhere around Minnesota. So you see that the map is updating automatically as I'm changing the data because we're observing on live data. Now, one thing I'm not doing is I'm not clearing away the old markers. We should do that, but I'll leave that up to you. So in this video, we've seen how to integrate Google Maps and live data with a shared view model in an Android app. So I hope this has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.